Hello everybody. How you guys doing? This is Terry. I'm just checking to make sure. Hey guys, how's it going? You know what? I'm going to see. I might need to turn this off. Okay. Hopefully this will just take the sound straight from my phone now. And uh, real quick. Can anybody let me know if they can hear me? So, just looking, just looking. I got two watching. Who all's watching? Okay. Maybe. Yeah, we got thumbs up. All right, cool. So, hi everybody. It's Terry. Um, I wanted to do a quick live stream here. This will be kind of short, uh, maybe half hour to an hour. Um, I'm here at the office by myself today because Sherry's working from home. Um, Mom and Aunt Kathy are having a rest because, oh my gosh, we did so much prep for this flash sale. It has been crazy. Like, we cleaned up the office for the live stream and then we just messed everything back up again because <laughs> live stream or for uh, flash sale prep is like, it's hardcore. So, um, and plus, we're just getting used to a whole new system here at our new office. So it was kind of like, where's the tape? Where are the pens? I don't know where the measuring tapes are. Oh my gosh. Um, so everything is just kind of getting going here. But um, so I've got this camera, my phone here, pointed toward the um, table here because I wanted to talk to you guys about kimono measurement because we do have measured sets in this live or in this flash sale i keep saying live stream oh my gosh i'm live streaming now we also have a flash sale going on now oh my gosh um so our current flash sale is going on right now we're calling it our homecoming flash sale and that's going on at the tangerine mountain secret stash um i probably should have grabbed my laptop to see if i could like look at questions that's a really smart idea give me one second All right, got my laptop. Uh, here we go. Let me see if I can pull up our stream. And all right, give me one second, guys. I'm just gonna make sure that I've got this up and running so that I can look for questions because I know um, I've got a couple people watching the feed, but this way I can also look at the questions directly. Okay, here we go. Sorry about this. <laughs> okay, so um, one of the things that I wanted to do was put together Basically, aha, here's the live stream. Okay. Oh, 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 here we go. Nope, 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 mute. Put together. All right, cool. All right, so I put together right here a chart of the, the different types of measurements that are used for measuring kimono. And then I've got kimono here that I'm going to be measuring on camera. And um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through this with you guys and I'm also gonna do a really bad drawing. Um, trust me when I say really bad, it's gonna be really bad because I'm not the artist of this business. Um, that distinction belongs to my sister. <laughs> and um, so, okay, good. Looks like people can hear, so awesome, yes. All right, there we are. Okay, so I'm gonna do a really bad drawing here. But the measurements that we're gonna be concentrating on for measuring kimono, okay? I'm gonna explain all of this in a second, but I'm gonna go through the words. The first one is mitake, okay? That basically refers to the length of the kimono along the back seam. And I'm gonna bring this a little bit closer. Then there's yuki. Yuki refers to basically the length of the back seam of the kimono to the wrist. 
Okay, so we're talking about back seam to the wrist. Don't worry, I'm going to keep going over this. Sore take is the length of the sleeve drop. So the sleeve comes from the arm and comes down. So basically it's how far down that comes. And then there's the hemline. This is a measurement that you don't always see if you're like, if you're in Japan and you're buying kimono, you might get the measurement of the back panel and the front panel of the kimono, but they might not group everything together in terms of hemline. But we do this, like particularly for our kimono sets that are online, because we find that this is a really convenient way, especially for people who aren't as accustomed to wearing kimono, it's a really convenient way for people to determine what kind of fit that they want. Because as you can see, there's kind of some ranges here that will kind of tell you how much the kimono is gonna close when you wrap it around you. And it depends upon the kimono that you're looking at. Some kimono, I know I'm not going to be able to close it. Like for some kimono, I would definitely be like under 20 centimeters. And I'll explain this in just one second, but I know that like an antique kimono, I'm probably gonna be wearing it more like as a jacket than as an actual kimono. Um, so that leads me to one other point of discussion here. There are multiple ways to wear kimono, right? This is fashion, okay? Fashion is art. And just like if you have somebody that says there's only one way to paint, that's not accurate, right? There's many different ways to paint. Um, there's lots of different paints and there's lots of different occasions and there's lots of different forms of art and there's a lot of different artistic expressions, right? So the way that we do things here is we don't tell people this is how you need to wear the kimono because you're the expert on you. You're the expert on your body and how you want to wear this. This is an art form. This is a fashion. So fashion is something that's subjective both in Japan as well as in the States. And we've seen many different ways of wearing kimono in Japan as well as in the States. So the measurements that I'm going to be giving you are going to give you an idea as to how this is going, this, this particular kimono that you might be looking at, how it's going to lay on you so that you can decide how you want to wear it. Okay. Um, so just to give you like further expand on this a little bit, um, I'm like five foot six and a half. So I'm a little bit on the tall end for kimono, especially if they're antique, right? So if I want to have like a, a really solid ohashori, which is the fold that goes over the waist. Um, I am not going to get that in a kimono that was made prior to like 1930 <laughs> because people were just shorter, right? So um, if, if I were like 5'2", then I would probably have an easier time finding that. So I just have certain expectations when I wear kimono based on my body size. And that's an important thing for everybody to keep in mind. Everybody has a different height, everybody has a different size. And so it's not like if you are a certain size, wearing a, ki a kimono a certain way is wrong. It's just, is this how you want to do it? That's all that it comes down to, right? So, all right. So now um, I'm going to draw a really bad drawing here. <laughs> I'm selling this real good here, I'll tell you. All right, I'm going to get my little tags out of the way. And... I'm gonna try to lower my stand a bit and bring it a bit closer. Okay, hopefully you guys will be able to see the bad drawing a little bit better. Yeah, so um, if you also want to know how these measurements work, <laughs> yeah, Tiff, this is going to be a masterpiece. I'm sorry. I was running late and I was just like, oh, I better go live now. Okay. Here, I'll get my phone case out of the way. Okay. I've got this nonsense out of the way. Okay. So we have my phone battery right here. Like that. All right. So here's our handy dandy charts. Okay. Here's our information. And then here's how this information is going to compare to the body. I'm gonna get my, my Sharpie here because I love my Sharpies. Okay, actually I'm gonna put this up here, put this down here. Okay, so here is 
a person, right? This is going to be great, guys. I promise I'm not drunk. Okay, so here is the person's torso, right? This is a great torso. Um, this is a very 1980s torso here. We've got like the shoulder pads and everything, right? And then here are, I think these are this probably legs. So this is a person's butt. Uh, <laughs> oh, you guys, this is amazing. So here's their legs. <laughs> And, you know, here's their, their feet, right? Because they're facing that way. So this is their back, right? So I'm going to draw some hair in here. Okay. <laughs> this is a great drawing. <laughs> so I could draw hair the way that my kids did when they were, like, little. Like, my kids would draw hair like this. Everybody. I, or, or, like, guys with short hair or, like, women with short hair would have just one like line on top. That's how my kids drew. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not a four year old. So we got, isn't this lovely? Um, let's see, April 7th, applying appropriation, of doing the culture a disservice. Okay, well, one of the ways that you can reconcile that, we actually have like a whole discussion about this on our webpage at tangerymountain.com. We have like an entire section. <laughs> Thank you, Sammy. So if you go to www.tangerine, I can write well, m-o-u-n-t-a-i-n.com, and then you look for information, you will find a couple things. You'll find sizing, and you'll also find a discussion on um, the appropriation. Appropriation. I don't know. It's like because I'm standing sideways, I can't spell. So anyway, all of this stuff is on our website as well. Okay. So moving along. So this lovely... I don't know what they're doing with their hair, but it's it's amazing, right? So here's the other arm. And I don't draw hands well, so there we go. Those are hands. Believe it or not, those are hands. So this is the person's back seam of, like, if you were wearing, like, a coat or something, right? Right. <laughs> I feel like I'm drawing Trogdor or something. So anyway, <laughs> I've got one, one beefy arm. So if you are going to take the first measurement here, which is the mitake, okay? The mitake measures from the back. It's from the nape of the neck down to essentially where you want the bottom hem of the kimono to hit you, okay? So you want it to generally go, like if you're gonna do like your, your strict traditional ways of doing things, you want that to hit you, you know, pretty far down towards the ankle or a little bit below the ankle okay so i'm going to draw a line here that is reasonably straight okay so that line refers to me ta okay okay hopefully that's pretty readable i'll write it this way too Okay, so this is the mitake measurement. Now, let's look at our chart up here. I'm gonna cover up my, my work of art here for a second here. So we're talking about the mitake. So here is our guidelines for mitake. So you take your measurements. So basically all of these measurements start with you because this is all about you, right? So you're gonna take your measurement, which is what we're doing here, right? You're going to take this measurement on your own body, and then you're going to look at the measurements of the kimono, right? If you plus 31 centimeters or more equals the mitake of the kimono, then you know that you're going to have what's almost like you're going to maybe need to double tuck the kimono. So what I mean by that and in fact, actually, I'm going to have to do like another amazing drawing here. So, oh boy. Okay. So what I'm talking about with Ohashori. Okay. So you have your kimono here, right? And you have your 
drop sleeve. And you have your obi. Okay, and here is the rest of your kimono. And I didn't draw the color because I, I'm gonna probably get it wrong. Okay, right sensor, left sensor. Yeah, so yeah, I'm trying to think of how I do it on myself. <laughs> okay, right side down, left side down. Yes, okay, we got this, right? So yeah, maybe I can do the collar in the back. And here we are with the collar. Yes. Okay, cool. Yay, I got this right. Now, when you see kimono worn, typically by people who are like male presenting or they're wearing it men's style, they're going to their kimono might look just like this, like just straight down from the from the bottom of the obi down to the bottom, it's just going to be like just the fabric, no folds, nothing extra. But if you're wearing it in a more female presenting way, whether or not you're you're like male female or whatever your gender is like it doesn't matter right it's just you get to decide how you want to wear this typically there is a fold that is in here underneath the ob okay and by the way on the website where it has information 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 we have sizing and then we also have how to wear. Okay, so that also is on our website too. Also, we have YouTube Tangerine Mountain. Okay, so we have a bunch of videos about how to wear kimono too on YouTube. So anyway, okay. So what this fold is, is that the actual kimono is a lot longer than the person's body. It's just that this length is bloused over a tie. Here's the tie. Okay, it's like, this is like an insert. Pretend it's like a glamour shot and you have an extra insert. So this is fabric and this is fabric and so you have this fold that goes over this chemo here okay so this looks really bad anyway so i'm gonna like move the phone up a little bit because this is kind of a hands-on demonstration right hopefully you guys can see ah this stupid phone holder okay this is gonna be bad this phone holder doesn't want to stay steady. Ah. <laughs> okay. Zoom. Okay, hi. <laughs> Sorry about that. Bixby just decided, hey, you want to do something right now? And I'm like, oh, no, I don't. This is a very casual live stream, guys. Okay, so basically what I'm going to show you is, for the Ohashori, right, you have, this is just a jacket, but I'm going to show it to you pretending this is a kimono. You're going to basically take, yeah, I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> my phone was just like, hey, you want to start Bixby now, right? No. Anyway, so you you have a kimono, but you're going to tie it off and then you're going to blouse it over this tie, okay? So this is ohashori. It's this horizontal fold that goes all around the body. So the key to mitake, and now I'm going to put the phone back here and hopefully it's going to stay put. But the key to mitake is basically deciding how here I'm gonna cross that out there how long do you want this fold to be okay or do you want any fold so yes no how long okay so that's me talking so all this to say is if your measurements if you've, you've got your measurement and you've got the kimono's measurement, if there is more than 31 centimeters between the two, um, yes, Sherry is covering the cultural appropriation thing. Okay, so if you have the kimono minus you, that's the main equation that you're going to try to do. So if the, you take the kimono's measurement and then you take your measurement, 
if that equals to more than 31 centimeters, then this ohashori is going to be really long, okay? Maybe that's okay. Maybe you're a really tall person. Maybe you just want a really long ohashori. You might have to double tuck it though. You might have to use two sashes to like do half an ohashori and then another half of an ohashori. If you're not sure how to do this, then you may want to, um, you may want to stay away from something that is super, super long because sometimes doing a double tuck, it's something that I've done, but it can also be a little bit of a pain. So it just depends upon your comfort level. If you're really experienced with wearing kimono, like this probably isn't going to scare you. Okay. All right. If the kimono's measurement minus your mitake is between 20 and 30 centimeters, then you're going to have a pretty normal ohashori. Okay. So this is a good, good range. This range right here, the kimono minus you, this is a good range. If it's, if the kimono minus your mitake measurement is less than 20 centimeters, then you're going to have a small or no ohashori. Now that's not necessarily wrong. You know, again, like I'm five, six and a half. If I, and I guess that half is important. I don't know. But many times, just to give you an idea, like, so my mitake, I want to say is something like, um, oh my gosh, you know what? Hang on a second. I'm going to do my, I forget my mitake off the top of my head real quick. I'm going to take my tape measure and just measure. Stupid fast here. My mitake is very roughly, I know my height, but like 137. Okay. So like Terry's mitake. And I'm going to take the tape measure and I'm going to measure myself for you guys after we do this, just to present the information in yet another way, because this drawing is, um, I mean, while this drawing is amazing, this is not the only way to explain this. Okay, so my mitake is like 137 centimeters, right? So if I have an antique kimono that has a 150 centimeter mitake, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 150 minus 137, right? So I'm going to get 13 centimeters. Then I'm going to go to my chart here. So here's where I'm at. Me plus, you know, less than 20 centimeters. And that is the size of the kimono's mitake. That means that I'm going to have a small or no ohashori. Basically, my ohashori is going to be like maybe this big. Maybe. Okay. And if I want this, or if I'm okay with this, then no big deal, right? Um, it's something to be said that in the international kimono wearing community, there's just this general recognition that this is an international community, right? So you're gonna have people of all different sizes and shapes. And it's not like you can, you know, like just take out some vertebrae or something so you can fit your kimono like that's not how this works so if you you know if all the kimono that are out there that you want to wear are all like you know in this range like less than 20 centimeters or if you just don't want to wear an ohashori at all you don't have to you know like the international kimono wearing community which includes you know everybody from japan as well and the and even folks in Japan who are a lot taller run into this, you know, this thing to deal with too. You know, it's, it's not like you can change your height. So if you don't have an ohashori, you don't have an ohashori. If you have a little ohashori, that's fine. You know, it, it's your body is what your body is, you know, and, and I think it's another important thing to remember, like going along the lines of that appropriation debate. Um, and here, I'm going to like, nailed on and talk to you guys. So going back to the um, appropriation debate, 
Um, it's important to remember that, you know, Japan was not colonized. So when you're talking about appropriation, you want to keep in mind the actual history of the country that's involved, right? And you want to keep in mind what kind of um, potential power difference or power struggle or power differential is involved, right? So in Japan, especially now, but really all the time, it's been the case that folks in Japan really want to share kimono. Like there, there isn't the sense of like foreigners can't wear kimono or foreigners can only wear kimono if they wear them correctly, right? Especially because it's, it's important to remember that Japanese culture is not, you know, like in American culture, we kind of have a little bit of like a puritanical view of some things sometimes. <laughs> like, you know, we have a very puritanical view of things like drinking, or we have a very puritanical view on like, you have to do things right. You know, you have to do things a certain way, otherwise it's not right. You know, even if that way is not very practical, we might still say, but that's what's right. You know, so we might have this sort of black and white view of things where, and maybe that's because we're such a young country, or maybe it's because we're, we're kind of based on like a different, we kind of got our start with a different faith system or, or what have you. I don't know. But in Japan, there's a, there's a very strong sense of practicality, right? Like people might think that, you know, you get this impression of Japan that there's very precise ways of doing things, right? Like if you watch, you know, a tea ceremony, you'll see there's this beautiful tradition of very precise movements and very precise methodology, right? And sometimes I think, you know, what we forget, oh, my face isn't even on screen. Sometimes I think what we forget is that there is actually a lot of practicality baked into those traditions. Like there is a lot of like accepting reality, you know, there's a, there's a lot of sense of like reality is reality and it, it isn't right to fight reality. So if you're taller than a kimono might kind of imply that you know, like if, if the kimono might have been originally designed for somebody who was like, you know, five foot one and you're five foot six and you want to wear this, like, it's not wrong. You know, it's, it's not like, oh my gosh, you're doing it badly. You're doing it wrong. It's like, well, you know, you have to be practical. Like you're not, you're not five foot one. So you don't have an ohashori. Okay. You know, <laughs> we're just, we're just going to be practical about this. So yeah, I, I think it's important to remember that like, it's, um, there's a lot of acceptance that is sort of baked into a lot of ways things are done in Japan. There's a lot of practicality. So definitely keep that in mind, especially when you're looking at these measurements, because these are guidelines. These aren't like, oh my gosh, you can't wear kimono unless it fits a certain like bracket of sizes or measurements. That's, that's not how this works. It's more along the lines of like, how do you want to wear this? Okay. All right. So coming back to all of this, right? So hopefully this example makes some sense. So you've, like I said, you got a kimono, that's, um, here, wait, I'm going to move my cords. So if you got a kimono that's 150 and this is my measurement, you subtract the kimono or you subtract my measurement from the kimono and you get a number and then you take that number to this chart and you decide where you are. Okay. Now, if that doesn't make any sense, please feel free to throw in you know, questions and what have you. Okay. Now going to the next measurement here with that, we're going to draw with our beefy arm here. Actually, I didn't leave a lot of room at the top, but we're just going to draw it in here. The next measurement is called Yuki. So I'm going to draw in the Yuki. Okay. The Yuki is from the back seam of the kimono. Usually you actually take it like from about here, but that's a little hard to see. Yuki. Okay. So middle seam to the wrist. That's the Yuki measurement. Okay. Now that 
this one's easy, right? But totally in comparison to, um, you know, the mitake. The mitake is, is like you have to do some math and you kind of have to figure things out. For the yuki, you're just going to try to keep the yuki measurement on the kimono as close to your own as possible, okay? So because this is a pretty straightforward measurement here, all you really just want to make sure, and I'm going to have this so that I don't get stuff on me. Okay, so like here's my arm, right? This is coming pretty close to my wrist. Now, to be strictly, strictly correct, right, you would want, and this isn't even a kimono, this is a hapi, but theoretically your kimono should come to your wrist here, right? Now, here again, <laughs> You have to keep in mind that in Japan, there are tons of people who, whose bodies don't fit this, right? Everybody has gotten bigger, you know, nutrition has gotten better. And even like the looms in Japan, you know, are gonna fit a bolt of fabric that's, you know, somewhere between 32 and like 36 centimeters and a kimono is made up of essentially panels that are that width, right? If your arms are such that your arm is sticking out more from the kimono, it's not like you can lop off part of your arm bone and shrink it at command. <laughs> you know, that's not how this works, right? So you will see even in in magazines in japan like fashion magazines you will see the models have more wrist showing than 100 years ago right and that's because you know people have just gotten more people have gotten bigger people have gotten taller right um in addition there's a lot of people out there who have particularly long arms and I'm one of them, right? So many times my personal Yuki measurement is going to be a lot longer than a kimono's Yuki measurement, especially if it is an antique kimono, right? So basically what I wanna do is just try to get that measurement as close as possible with the understanding that like for somebody like me who is known as monkey arms in our office, I am most likely not going to get a measurement that's to the wrist, uh, but I don't want to be hulking out the kimono either. So if you notice like a really big difference between your Yuki and the kimono's Yuki, you also don't want the sleeve to like come to your elbow because then you might be hulking out the part of the kimono where the sleeve is stitched, right? So, you know, it, you might rip that seam. So if you notice that there's this big difference, you know, 20 centimeters or so, then you might want to stay steer clear of that kimono because that one might not be a very good fit for your arms, okay? So going back to our chart here, the next one is the soretake. Again, this one is pretty easy compared to the mitake. For, for this, the mitake is the hardest measurement to figure out. This is just... Yeah, the other measurements are not too bad. Okay, so the sodetake refers to the sleeve drop of the kimono. Okay, so I'm going to write this in here. Sodetake. Okay, so sodetake refers to how far down the sleeve drops. Now, there's a guideline here of your height, your um, height, or your mitake. Some people go by mitake, some people go by height, divided by three. And that will be ideal for most kimono. Now, obviously, hurisode are an exception, okay? So, hurisode, I'm gonna flip this around. So, you've got your kimono here. Hurisode are, of course, very long sleeve, right? And here's the rest of the kimono. Okay, so that's hurisode. 
okay? Typical length sleeve is going to be like here-ish, okay? So the vast majority of kimono. And this is true whether the armpit is closed or open. Typically, like traditionally, armpit closed is men's and um, underarm open is women's. However, um, again, you're the expert in your body. Like we're not going to tell you what you should and shouldn't wear. And we have gotten in many kimono <laughs> that have then converted basically where the underarm has been opened up or the underarm has been stitched closed. Um, and, you know, I don't know if either the kimono was first worn by somebody who was, you know, one gender and then worn by somebody else who was another gender, or if it was worn by somebody who was trans, like, I don't know. Um, but this definitely happens, okay? But generally speaking, like, if you have, you know, your body here, you want this. Like, I drew this to be almost a half, but you generally want this to be one third for non furisore, right? Now, this has a lot of fudge factor in it, though. You don't have to really stick to this too much unless maybe you're a particularly short person or a particularly tall person. So if you're a particularly, um, I can need more cardstock, but if you're like a particularly short person and you're trying to wear just a regular kimono, and your sore take is like down to here, you know, you, you might feel like that's just a little long, it's getting in your way. More often though, it, this is an issue for really tall people, <laughs> which I'm exaggerating here, but so you've got this and if your sore take is like here, here's the rest of your, I'm like totally exaggerating this guys, but so if you're if this is your like sore take, <laughs> um what what ends up kind of happening is that maybe this is going to be just a little bit too small on you anyway or this might look a little bit disproportionate you know if you're like if you're wearing like traditionally men's kimono and your ob is down here and the sore take is up here as opposed to being like a more typical like down here it, it might just look a little bit imbalanced so that's the reason why you pay attention to sore take. It, it's mostly just if you are particularly short or particularly tall. And we do have this on, um, on the website, once again, under information and sizing. So all of the stuff that I'm telling you is also on our webpage here, um, as well as this. And I also, when I'm done with this live stream, I will take a picture of this and I will post it um, with, with my amazing drawing here. I'm, a, I'm an awesome artist. Okay, so then the last measurement that we're going to be talking about is the hemline. So the hemline is going to be basically the widest part of the body. That's the part of the body that you care about. Now, I don't care what the widest part of the body is for you. Like, you may be kind of a triangular shaped person, and this is the widest part of your body. Or you may be a more inverted triangle shaped person and the bust line is the widest part of your body or the chest is the widest part of your body. Like it, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Like you could be somebody who is, you know, more almost like a, what is that? It's not a beaker. It's like a, not a graduated cylinder. Maybe it's a beaker. I don't know. So, you know, maybe most of your size is below the, the waist, right? It doesn't matter, okay? Hemline is sort of a euphemism for whatever the widest part of your body is, okay? But, and it also refers to the way that we measure the kimono, and you're gonna see how I do this in a bit. Basically, I literally measure the bottom hem of the kimono, okay? So the hemline, I'm just gonna pick, even though the shoulders are wider, I'm gonna pick the hips here just because this is crowded. The hemline, refers to the circle around the widest part of your body. So what you do to get this measurement, you would do to get your measurement, right, is you're going to measure circumference of 
widest part of the body. Okay? So in my case, that's going to be my hips. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a uh, tape measure and I'm going to go around the widest part of the body, which is going to be my hips. Okay? But for you, it could be different, right? So again, you're going to do the same kind of math that you did for your mitake, right? You're going to take the kimono measurement. Let's say the kimono measurement is, I don't know, like 140 centimeters, right? And then let's say that my measurement, and I'm making this up right now because I don't feel like grabbing my measurements, but um, I should know this off the top of my head, but my let's say that my measurement is 135 centimeters, okay? So I am gonna take the kimono minus me, and I'm gonna get five. Okay, so that's that's the difference between the two. Yeah, booty, exactly, right? And then I'm going to go to my chart here, okay? Here again, these are guidelines, right? A lot of kimono, like especially the older the kimono is, the more I'm getting into this kind of territory where things are a bit tight because, again, I'm, I'm not the size that people wore 100, 120 years ago. Okay, so I'm going to look at this chart. If this number here is greater than 40 centimeters, then I'm going to close this really comfortably. I'm going to be able to like close it, have plenty of overlap, right? Now, if it's something like an absolutely off the wall, like you have like 100 centimeters or something, first of all, you might want to remeasure yourself. <laughs> Second of all, you're probably a very, very narrow person. Um, there are ways to get around if you are a very narrow person and the kimono is a lot wider than you are, there's there's kind of a way to wrap it that you kind of fold the under, like the, the right hand panel back a little bit as you wear it. But regardless, um, if it's like a totally crazy difference, like 60, 70 centimeters, something like that, then you might want to rethink that kimono. It might not be the most comfortable on you because you, you might kind of look a little bit like you're swimming in it. Um, it, you know, again, it depends on your comfort level. But anyway, so if it's greater than 40, then you could close it comfortably. If it's between 30 and 40, so again, this number, which is the difference between the kimono and you, if it's between 30 and 40, it's going to close okay, right? It might be, you know, maybe a little bit snug, but it's going to close okay. If it's between 20 and 30, it's going to be a bit tight, right? So you're definitely going to have to make sure you watch like the way you walk if you don't want the kimono to split open as you're walking, okay? If you're wearing it this way, okay, remember, there's other ways to wear a kimono. If it's you, or if that number here is less than 20 centimeters, you're going to get little to no closure, okay? Now, um, kind of piggybacking on what I was saying before, like, and I know some of you guys have been um, putting a couple of messages in here, too, about... Um, yeah, yeah, so the diaspora in America have had to deal with, yeah, well, and that's true too, because there are, um, it, it's true that there are a lot of folks of Japanese descent in the States too. And so whether they feel similarly or differently than what's going on in Japan, yeah, that's definitely something to think about. Um, and like, like April was saying, most of the Japanese folks are exchange or foreign students are really stoked about things, you know, and, and it's also important to remember too, like the here, and I'm going to actually yeah, I'm gonna bring this up. So just to give you guys an example of like how much this is a discussion in Japan, right? So when we were in Japan last time, I think it was the last time we were in there. Okay, maybe you guys can see me now. Okay, so when we were in Japan the last time, the um, we saw a fashion show by Sheila Cliff, and Sheila Cliff is one of the, um, she's the first British certified kimono instructor in Japan, 
okay? She's a lovely person. Excuse me, she's got books published in um, English and Japanese. She wrote the information about the kimono exhibit at the Victoria and Albert in England, um, or in the UK. The exhibit that they were going to have coinciding with the Olympics, and then COVID happened. <laughs> so, um, Sheila is extremely well regarded in Japan. We went to her fashion show. She had a fashion show in um, 2018. Actually, this wasn't the last time we were there, but it was one of the times we were there. Um, and before her fashion show, which featured a mixture of Japanese and non-Japanese models, the chairman of the festival got up and he basically gave a, a speech, I have the video of it someplace, um, in which he basically said, you know, look, the Olympics are coming and we are going to be deluged in foreigners. And the foreigners are going to want to experience our culture. It is extremely important for us to continue to export our culture and to make sure that other people around the world value kimono. So his challenge for everybody attending this festival, we were like the only non-Japanese watching the festival. Everybody else, there was like probably about 10,000 people or so. Um, and this was not in like the main part. This was outside of Tokyo. So it was, it was pretty much just, there really weren't any other Westerners there aside from the models that were in the show. Um, he challenged everybody to be wearing kimono and to, and to practice, to get into kimono and wear them because it was important to be able to show foreigners and invite foreigners to experience kimono. And he said, even if it looks like the foreigners aren't doing it by your definition of correct, basically, um, it didn't matter. He said that, you know, foreigners need to be basically invited to wear kimono. Um, another thing too, that was um, really interesting about that, that whole thing was that, um, so there's a couple of kimono groups that I follow on Facebook and they're Japanese. I'm going to take a sip of this. So these are all Japanese language groups, right? Um, so there's not a lot of non-Japanese on there. Now, these are Japanese folks, not necessarily located in Japan, right? These are folks who are like Japanese, but they're located from all over the world, right? One of the things that I see people griping about a lot is the Kitsuke police or the kimono police, um, basically where everybody gets kind of upset when people are too much of a stickler for the rules, okay? So if, if you have somebody who is like nitpicking a photo of somebody in kimono and going like, oh, her ohashori should have been a couple centimeters longer, or her obi is a little bit off, you know, the, the, the otaiko should be a little bit fluffier or something, you know, everybody <laughs> in these groups is all like, I hate people like that. Um, and, and it cracks me up because I'm like, oh my gosh, same here. <laughs> you know, like any place you go, like whether you're in an English language kimono group, whether you're talking about like people who are, you know, first generation or second generation Japanese outside of Japan, whether you're talking about people within Japan or you're talking about Japanese expats all over the world, like everybody is united in, in just not liking the Kitsuke police, you know, the fashion police. Um, and it, it just, it cracks me up when I see this because you know, <laughs> everybody's just like, I know, right? I hate that. Um, it's like this universal phenomenon. So um, also there's another thing that I want to, um, point out too, especially when it comes to for the sizing and how you, you don't necessarily, like you can use the sizing. Definitely. This is, this is great. Especially if you're wearing kimono like this, right? You don't have to wear it this way. And I'm going to actually grab real quick, um, a couple issues of kimono hime that I have. I'm trying to think my books aren't very well organized, but I'm going to grab them. This is a kimono fashion magazine in Japan. So I'll hang on one second, guys. I'll be right back. Thank you. 
So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so these magazines here, in fact, I'm gonna bring this down again. Okay, so this is Kimono Hime. This is a little bit of an older, what is this one from? I don't remember. Um, but you're gonna see a whole lot of different looks in these magazines. You know, for example, this gal is wearing boots. This gal's wearing gym shoes. This ha this gal has a sweater and her kimono is done very low with a button down shirt as a juban. Um, I don't know what she's wearing under her kimono. It's a top of some kind. I don't really know. But anyway, um, this one definitely has a button down shirt for a juban. So like, I know that it's really easy to look at, you know, maybe a straight up picture like this and say anything other than this is appropriative. But what we need to remember is that kimono have evolved over time. And if, and if a person tries to lock kimono into one particular look and say, this is what it is and anything else is appropriative, then the problem is you're actually ignoring history. And that's an easy thing to do because it's not like we teach kimono history. <laughs> you know, it's not like we teach kimono fashion history, um, you know, in the world. And, and in fact, even in Japan, necessarily, it's, it's not like that. But um, magazines like this are really cool because they help to show how kimono evolved even today. So in Japan, over the last several hundred years, we evolved from the kosode to the kimono the way that it was worn during the Meiji period, which is not quite how it is worn today. The Taisho period... Oh. Sorry, somebody trying to call me. Um, and then you have like the 60s, which is where we kind of got this. This is sort of like the standard traditional like samurai wife style wearing of kimono, right? And then you evolve into stuff like this, which is really creative, really fashion forward, sometimes mis mixing Western wear and kimono fashion. And actually that's a throwback too, that the idea of mixing Western wear and kimono fashion is a concept that's like 130 years old. So it's old as new. So anyway, um, yeah, like they're doing a whole bunch of different things here. So, like, you might think this is the only way to wear a kimono, except that she's also got a Western belt on as an OVGMA and a strand of pearls. So, I mean, even here, where you're looking very, like, traditional in a way, there's still these, like, pieces here that might not be considered traditional, but yet they're very fashionable, okay? So, um... I'm trying to find an example of sort of shortening. Yeah, like this gal has got her hikama on like really high. So this would be an example of like shortening your kimono by quite a bit. If you're, if you have a kimono with like a really short mitake, you can still wear it. You just can shorten it and basically turn it into almost like a short dress. Um, and I'm just gonna flip through one more here. This one's all about the fabrics. Do, 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 do. Okay. Um, I love this issue so much. This one's like all about the lace. I mean, here she's got which what looks like her OB in the front, which hasn't been done since like last hundred, I don't know, 150, 160 years, somewhere in there. But anyway. So you can get an idea as just different kinds of ensembles that are out there as well. Um, probably I should grab just a couple other magazines that have some really interesting ways of wearing kimono. But at any rate, just giving you an idea. Oh yeah, here, this is a good example, right? So her kimono, this is the kimono and this is the, the juban, the under kimono, right? So she's got this worn, like she's got this hiked up really, really short. The ohashori is a little bit exaggerated, but actually this is not that much longer than what you'd want it to be on a person of her height. It's just that this kimono is, <laughs> is 
very short on her because it is an old kimono. So, and also she's got a lot of wrist showing here because this is an antique um, haori. This haori is, is probably like 1940s maybe. And clearly like, it's not like she's, she's not pulling her arms into her sleeves to make it look like it hits her wrist. Like she's not T-Rex arming it. So this is what I mean when I say like, don't get too hung up on this when you're looking at kimono and what you want to get. Like you don't have to get too, you know, picky about this, okay? Because you can always do something like this or you can do something different too. You know, this is, this is fashion. Fashion is meant to grow. Fashion is meant to evolve, okay? Um, so I basically say this as like, this is very useful. This is very helpful. However, this is also not like gospel. This is if you're if you're off by a couple centimeters on some of these things, like who cares? <laughs> you know, it's okay. Um, especially you know for things like height and hemline. I mean, you may gain or lose weight. You may slouch or stand up straight. I mean, don't get too hung up on it. Okay, so let's go away. Now, <laughs> whew, I am going to bring this back up here and hang on a second let me bring this up a little bit more you can see just how messy the office is right now because I didn't get a chance to clean up too much okay so yes exactly April it is a great starting guideline um yes so okay Right now, I have my metal tape measure. I need my other tape measure. Hang on. Ah, I should have grabbed those too. Okay. So, what you want to do to measure yourself for a kimono, it's helpful to have a paper um, or a fabric tape measure. You don't have to have one. You can kind of make do if you have like a metal one like this. I like to use the metal one for measuring kimono because they don't stretch. Like this stays consistent. And plus I can also lock where it is if I need to. But for measuring yourself, and I'm here by myself, so we're going to be kind of, I'm going to be fudging this just a little bit, right? So to give you an idea here, you're gonna have somebody else do this for you. And when you have somebody do this for you, try to stand up, oops, try to stand up straight and look straight ahead. Don't don't look down what they're doing, because that'll, that'll mess you up, okay? So for measuring the mitake, okay, you're gonna find the nape of your neck and that is where you're gonna start your tape measure. And you're gonna go down to your ankles, however far you're going to go. So you're generally going to go down, oh, you can't hear me, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm gonna try to shout. <laughs> or just turn to you, okay. So right here, nape of the neck. Okay, right here, right? And then you're gonna draw that down to your ankles. Now, how far down on your ankles you go, you can go basically to the um, outer ankle bone, that bone that protrudes from like the side of your ankle, like about that level is a good level, okay? Now for, so that's mitake, that, that will give you your mitake measurement. Try to keep that tape measure straight down your spine and like it'll be, try to measure like the gap between your feet when you're standing there with your feet together, okay? That way you've got like a straight up and down measurement. For Yuki, you're gonna find your, the middle of your back and that is going to stretch to your wrist. So basically from the middle of the back to the wrist, that's the Yuki, okay? So my Yuki is like 73-ish. 
Um, a lot of Yuki are going to be, for, for like women's kimono, you're going to have a lot of them that are going to be in like the 60 to 65 range. So you can see why, and, and this is me doing it on myself. I'm probably closer to like 70 or 71, but this is why most kimono, like I have a lot of wrist showing because I am monkey arms. Okay. Then for the, um, sore take, it's basically that meat take measurement, but take the, like, um, a third of that. Okay. Divided by three. Um, and then for the widest part, whatever that is. So like if, let's say it is the bust line, you're going to take your, your tape measure and you're just going to go around, kind of overlap, just take the fullest part, whatever that is, right? And that, that would be your measurement. So like, I'm at, I don't know, 121 for that particular measurement. And you're, the reason why we do all of the measurements in centimeters is because that's how it's done in Japan. Okay. So yeah, unfortunately in America, we have to get used to metric sometimes. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> I like the metric system a lot better. Okay, so now that you've kind of got a little bit of an idea of how this is done on a person considering I don't have anybody else here to help me with this. Um, I mean, I could maybe take a Nihon Ningyo, but that might be a little tough because a lot of them are posed. Um, yeah. They're all posed. Mm. Yeah, and the Kokeshi don't have arms. So, okay. Anyway, now that we have kind of an idea as to how this is. Yeah, I'm sorry, Sammy. It's the metric system. Dun, dun, dun. What now we're going to do is I'm going to show you what this looks like for measuring the actual kimono. Okay. Because... I actually have two stacks of kimono here that weren't um, measured. Yes, we have a question from the sale for me. Go ahead, share. Um, well, I'm just gonna get rid of this. Okay, tape measure, go away. I'm gonna clear off my table a little bit. Um, I need that tape. I don't need these. Okay, so. What I'm going to do while I'm waiting for Sherry to get her question to me, I'm going to grab a kimono that has a skew that I did not get to measure. Oops. Here we go. Okay. How a particular piece would fit. Okay. I can help you with that. incoming okay so when we store our kimono in the warehouse um, we put the obi in with the kimono so um, that's that particular set so what I'm gonna do this is why all my containers have lids So I'm going to take my kimono and I'm going to lay it out along this table. Let me get my computer out of here. Okay. So I like using a metal tape measure because I'm laying everything flat anyway. I'm going to slide this down actually. And I'm going to take one of these sleeves. Now this is laid flat, right? This tape measure has centimeters. I'm going to measure the drop of the sleeve. And this is 49 and a half ish. Okay. So I'm going to take a tag. Sode Take is 49.5. And everything that we do is kind of like in Japan too. They'll do it like to the half centimeter, basically. I'm not going to do like 49.4 because... I mean, it's easier to just read it on the halves and like a tenth of a centimeter, a millimeter is not going to matter. Okay. Then from here, I'm going to measure the Yuki. So I'm going to lay this flat. 
I'm going to find the back seam here. I'm going to make sure that that's laying flat. I'm going to make sure that this is flat. I'm going to take the tape measure. I'm going to place it along here to here. And I've got a Yuki of 63 and a half. So I'm going to write that down. 63.5. Okay. Oh, and I should probably WK Two oh one oh. Okay. Um, how the hem measurement works. Okay. Let me see here. Hemline one forty four. Misake one fifty five. Sorry, sake sixty two. Yuki sixty three. Hemline one forty four. Going quickly one more time. How the hem measurement works to the widest part of the body. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I can do that. Um. Okay. For the widest part, you're going to include from the armpit down. That's a really good question, Sammy. Um, so basically, you figure this is for the body of the kimono, right? So for this kimono, in fact, actually, I'm going to show you something real quick. I'm going to measure the mitake of this and see if it's close to that one, because if it is, then we'll have a really good example here. So I have the collar here. I don't measure the collar. I've got from the collar line down. So the way that some um, kimono companies will do it, sometimes they'll describe the mitake as from like next to the neck on down because they don't measure the collar. I basically just say it's the back seam from where the seam meets the collar down to the bottom. So I'm folding in the collar here. I'll show you guys a little bit more about that in a minute. But I'm basically stretching this tape measure out. And this one looks like it is 158 centimeters. So this one's pretty close to the one, the, the one that you guys are asking about. Pen, pen, pen. This is why we kept the pens. One, this way, one, 58. And then for the hemline, I basically take the hem of the kimono. So this is the bottom hem. Okay, I'm gonna lay this flat. Oops, my tag. Lay that flat. And I'm gonna measure that. Spread it out. I don't wanna stretch it. And it's also kind of folded up. Come here, fabric. There we go. I'm gonna take this and go down to here. This one's 140. Okay. Where did my tag go? Okay. 140. Okay. So for this this one here, right? The hemline is 140 right now for me my widest part from the armpits under because you figure okay how to be here okay so i'm gonna throw this one on okay so this kimono here's this is gonna correspond to my yuki measurement and then Oops. Sleep. Okay. Now, my widest measurement is actually my hips. So I'm going to do that real quick. Okay. So I'm at 128. Okay. So 128. My hemline. widest part okay because I did the bus line before and that was like 128 so this is 138 roughly right or no 128 let me do that again a little measurement here 128 sorry okay 
So 128. So that's my measurement. This kimono that I'm wearing, its hemline is 140, which is literally the, how big this is from where I'm spreading it out. So here is the bottom part of the kimono. This is the part that, that goes all the way around the feet. That's what I measured. That's the hemline. So this is the bottom, bottom part of the kimono. Okay. So if I subtract 140, which is the kimono, minus 128, so kimono minus Terry, or minus you, then I get 12, right? So that equals 12. So now I'm going to go to my chart and I'm going to see where 12 falls. This is less than 20 centimeters, so I'm going to get little to no close. Does that check out with reality? Let's find out. Okay, so here I am. I have some closure in here, right? But not by much. I have, this is about 12 centimeters of closure, okay? So it, it covers, but it's definitely gonna be, like if I were trying to keep this closed all the time, I'm definitely gonna make sure that I'm taking my little steps, little steps, or um, I might wear a skirt underneath this and use this over the skirt. This actually was, oh, this was super popular in Japan. I think it still is wearing a kimono and then having a skirt underneath it and actually bringing the kimono up. Some of the members of the Wafu Club, the Wafu Club um, in Chicago, they were doing that too, where they would bring the kimono up maybe about that high and you would see the ruffles of the skirt underneath. It was really cool. It's a, it's a really cool look. So anyway, the reason why we're measuring the hemline as opposed to like from the collar to the collar is because this is how much you have to go around here. The collar comes out to some extent here, but basically the way that the kimono works, this is going to give you an idea as to how this is going to fit. Okay. Yes, I will hold up the chart. So here is chart. So you're going to take that, the kimono measurement minus you. Okay. And that's basically how you achieve the math for the mitake, oops, as well as for the hemline. Okay. So for the mitake, as well as the hemline, you're going to have kimono minus you. And that's how you're going to get to one of these criteria here and then one of these criteria here. Okay? So I'm going to hold this up for just a little bit longer. And don't forget, guys, we also have this information here. So that's our webpage, okay, that has the sizing information on it, so tangerinemountain.com. And if you click on the three bars at the top and then go to information, then you're going to see, or I think on desktop it's um, maybe three bars, or it might just display across, no, it displays across the top. I know my webpage, really I do. So there's like a, a bar across the top with like, store and information and about and a couple other things so yeah what you're looking for is information because then you're going to see sizing and um <laughs> yes you could post a photo of my my chart like this is this is a beautiful work of art here i'm gonna put this on the refrigerator because Lord knows that we have a lot of magnets now. Because guys, we have magnets in the secret stash. It's awesome. 
Anyway, so for this piece, I now have a tag with the measurements, and so that's what I'm going to put with this one. Okay? <laughs> yes, thank you. So, also, slight um, impromptu folding tutorial here. I'll show you guys how to table fold while we're at it. Oh, I take measure. So, I'm going to find the side seam. So, this is the armpit here to the bottom hem. Okay. Oops, I just totally bonked that. I'm going to peel back the bohashori. I'm going to bring the other, oops, bring in this here. So basically I just folded this part back. I'm going to do this again with the next kimono so you guys will be able to see. I'm going to match up the two collars here and then I'm going to take the other side seam, pick it up and match it to this side seam. And the way that I know that I did this right is that if I kind of hold this up, this sort of looks like an M. Okay. So I don't know if you can kind of see that, but yeah, it basically kind of looks like an M with like a peak. That's how I know I did that right. And then as far as the collar, I just make sure that the collar is tucked in. I'm going to do this. Some people wing the sleeves out where one sleeve goes this way and the other sleeve goes on the underside. But for our purposes, because remember we're a store, like we're a warehouse, we wind the two sleeves up. Yes, <laughs> the greatest challenge. So now in Japan, when you get kimono, a lot of times they're going to be folded in thirds here. Um, again, remember, we're a store and our, our lovely Kellex sh shelves from Ikea are about uh, 15 and three quarters inches deep. So if we folded these in thirds, then... Um, we would have kimono just like all over the place. So we fold them into fourths. It's a little bit more compact for us. Obi for us, like this is the Nagoya Obi. You know, there's different ways to fold Nagoya Obi. You know, traditionally you would do your yeah. fold this way. And then fold, and then fold, and then actually this one doesn't even stitch down. Probably this would be a little shorter. This is a very long obi. Um. Anyway, and then actually this is a really long obi. Holy cow! And then you can do. Oops, Fold that over and do this, and then you can do that. But for us, again, because we're a store, we fold them like shopkeepers. So for an Agoya Obi, we're going to fold it about the same width as the Obi, maybe a little bit less. And then fold, fold, fold. Sometimes we'll zigzag it, sometimes we'll essentially roll it. It kind of depends upon if the OB already has creases in it. Basically, how cooperative is the clothing? And then we'll get to the triangle part and just end that in the middle. However we need to do that, like here I just folded this back. It doesn't matter, you could probably also wrap this around and accomplish the same thing. But the goal is to do like sometimes I'll bring the the tare in and then fold it this way sometimes since the, the tare on this one has the same pattern I might just fold it 
like that. Like there's there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. Um, yes, that's how you fold a Nagoya Obi. Yeah, so again, it like you'll see a lot of Nagoya Obi folded like this in stores in Japan. Um, and that's how we do it too, because yeah. Um, oh, and this is a grade B, and then oh, I forget what the price is on this one. Pin. So oftentimes we pin the tags on the inside of the collar, but sometimes we'll pin on the outside. And we use pins as opposed to like um, tags. <sighs> That's because like the punch guns, like the, the um, barb guns. I think they're called, I don't remember. But anyway, those guns, they, they punch through fabric and they can leave holes. So I don't like to, to do that, you know? Okay, I'm gonna put that one back. All right, so going to our next candidate. Here's another one. So yeah, just to give you guys an example of again of folding the Nagoya Obi, right? This one's actually stitched close. This is a little bit more typical length. I'm right-handed, so for some reason the tade has to go to the right for me. I don't know. So the way that you would typically do this, yeah, this is a much more typical length. Gosh, that other one was really long. Okay. So what you would typically do like at home to do this is you would do this basically right and then you can let's see then you bring this down and this here and then this here and i'm not as smooth at doing this because i do this type of fold maybe like 1% of the time. <laughs> so, yeah. But, um, the way that we do it here, and this is totally a fine way to do this, is we just start this about the width of the OB here. This one is kind of, zig it, just, it, gets, it depends on where the creases are. Sometimes I'll zigzag and then fold over. There's no like right or wrong way to do this. It's just like, do you get it folded neatly? Okay, good. The main thing is, is that you want to end up at this point, like in the middle of this stack somehow. So if you wrap it around and it's like here, you don't want that. You want it to be like right in the middle. And then usually I will like, scoot this here so that's snug. If this has the same design all throughout, then a lot of times I'll just roll this. But this one has a design that's in a certain part. So I'm gonna bring the end of the tare here. And I like to do this in part to make sure that I can see the design, but also to protect the tare. The tare is the wide end. The te is the skinny end. And then I'll just roll it. And that way, I mean, like, you know there's more design here, but you can still see, like, there's a design here. It's not just a plain red OB. Um, yeah, so th this is a really nice compact way. This is, what the, like I said, this is the way a lot of stores do it because it is compact. It's a, that's why we do it. It's more compact and it, it doesn't go to spaghetti as easily because this is contained within this. So the other way of folding, um, it's really easy to pick up an OB and just have everything kind of all over the place. So, yeah. Anyway, okay, so measuring this kimono, this is 2009. Uh, sharpie, sharpie, sharpie. There you go. Okay. W, K, 2009. And 
That's a grade B. We have a grading system. A is excellent, B is very good, C is good, and probably the, the lowest end of wearable by our standards, which is a little bit hard to say because everybody has different standards. Um, I will wear things that are in like D shape <laughs> if I like the design, um, especially if I'm at a convention because then it can get messed up and I don't care. But everybody has different standards. Some people will only like wear something if it's in A shape and that's fine. It's totally up to you. This is just sort of based like kind of loosely on how we've seen it done in Japan. Okay. So this one has a sodetake of 47. I usually start with sodetake when I'm measuring just because it's right here and it's easy to do. Move this over. And then same thing with the yuki. It's like, this is already folded up, so I might as well do the measurements that I do while it's folded. So this one has a yuki of 64. So you can see why, like, if this is a Yuki of 64 and my Yuki is, like, 70, I mean, I'm six centimeters off. That's, like, two, two and a half inches. It's not too bad, you know? Could be worse. And then from here, actually, I'm going to flip this. This one has, like, a really nice drape to it. Okay, so here again, I'm measuring the back seam. The collar here is meant to be folded in, but part of the reason why I don't do the collar is because different people will fold in the collar to different degrees. Some people fold in the collar a lot and some people fold it halfway, but I just do strictly the back seam where it meets the collar. Okay. this here and so that is a mitake of 151 and a half let's just double check yeah 151 and a half okay 151.5 all right now a quick way to do the hemline is to do half the hem and then multiply it by two. Um, so this one would be 73 times two, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to unfold this all the way because then I can show you guys once again how to fold. So I'm going to lay this out. Sorry for the weird scrapey sounds. This table has a texture to it. Okay, so here's this bottom hem. Okay, it looks like 143. 43. Okay, so once again, to kind of go by this math, right? So let's say my mitake is 137. This has a mitake of 151 and a half, right? So I'm gonna take, again, it's the kimono minus you, okay? So I am gonna do, in fact, I'm gonna bring this down so that you guys can see this better. Okay, so kimono minus you. So I'm gonna take the kimono, which is 151.5 minus 137, and I'm going to get an answer of 14.5, right? So for the mitake, it's going to be less than 20 for me. Because um, this is maybe, not, it's like mid-showa, maybe 60, 70, somewhere in there. So smaller no hashari, which is fine. Um, for my yuki, my yuki, I think it's 70 or 71, somewhere in there. So like I said, it'll be off by about that much, but that's pretty typical for me. Um, because I can't, I can't shorten my arms. Um, Sodetake, 47 centimeters. <clears throat> you know, if I take mine divided by three, it's like uh, 
yeah, somewhere in there. That's that's not too bad. And then hemline, 143 is the kimono, minus 128, which is mine. And so we would end up with um, like 15. Yeah. So here, I would, I would get more closure than that other kimono that we just had, but I would still be under 20. So it's going to be, it's going to be tight for me. Okay. Unless I'm wearing it in like non-traditional, non-standard ways, which is fine. Okay. So folding. There we are. So here again, I'm going to find the armpit and I'm going to follow that seam all the way down. This is a little bit of a shortcut. You could theoretically take the whole thing and just lay it out like this, but as a shortcut, find the armpit, go down to here. pins. Okay. So this is the Migoro. This is the body panel. Um, this is the Okumi, which is the half panel that like crosses over in front. So I'm going to pull back the Okumi and there usually is a crease in the kimono. Okay. Then I'm going to bring the other collar. This is the 80 or the collar. I'm going to bring the other 80 on top of this 80. Sleeve is falling off the table. And I'm going to bring the two Okumi on top of each other. Okay. Then from here, beep, 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 beep. there we go. From here, I'm going to pick up the side seam and bring it to the other side seam. I'm just going to scoot that down a little bit. And I'm going to make sure that this side seam comes over. I'm going to, this collar is, I'm going to tuck it in here. And then I'm going to fold the sleeves back. They're here. Okay. And again, because store, I'm going to bring the bottom to here. I'm going to put the OB there, fold it up. And then I'm going to <laughs> find my safety. Oh my goodness, there is like a pile of safety pins down there. Let's take a magnet and go get those. But anyway, so there's this. So now you guys have seen how measurements work. You've seen how we measure the kimono. You've seen the math of how these measurements correspond to people. Um, does anybody have any questions? Because probably at this point, oh, how do you do the same for a hoodie soda? That's a really good question. Here, let me grab one. Hoodie soda, hoodie soda. Ah, here we go. Okay. So here is a hoodie soda. Now, there's a couple different ways to account for the sleevage. One way to do it is to have the sleeves, oops, just one on top of the other, just kind of hold that there, maybe flip it a little bit, bring up the body, and just kind of bring the sleeves along with it. Usually, like I said in Japan, this will be done in thirds. So you would do this, and then that, okay? But what I sometimes will do and what some of our people in Japan will do is they'll bring the sleeve bottom all the way up to the top. And that way it ends up kind of acting like a regular like sleeve size. And then they'll just proceed as normal. Um, so you kind of end up with the sleeve like maybe double folded a little bit 
it just um different booty sodae have different lengths too so this one's longer if you look at chew booty sodae which is like a booty sodae with shorter length long sleeves um yeah this one's really pretty um you might you might not have to fuss with them quite as much part of the reason why i like bringing the bottom of the sleeve to the top here and i'm gonna um pop this up a little bit more i'll show you something in a second oops oh bye phone come back there you go okay so there's table folding and then there's stand folding <laughs> and stand folding is something that we have to do on the road quite a bit there we go so if you have your kimono here and you're just like, I need to fold this and I don't have a table, okay? What you're gonna do is find the crease at the top of the shoulder and then you're gonna find that other crease at the top of the shoulder. And the way that you know that you found that crease, sometimes the crease is right there. So, I mean, that's pretty straightforward. But when you hold this up, the body and the sleeve should go straight down. If you got it wrong, then you'll see like a puckering. That's not good. A lot of times there's also a crease on the collar too. So basically what I'm gonna do is follow that crease in to the collar, okay? And I'll kind of get wiggle that to make it together a lot of times the collar will have like a crease in the middle of it as well. I'm gonna see if maybe you guys can see that. Yeah, it looks like you can see that. Okay, good. So I'm gonna bring these two points of this crease together and I'm gonna pinch them with my finger. So this is the rest of the kimono. I'm gonna take the two body panels and the two sleeve panels, and I'm gonna bring them across. So I know I've done this right because this is all hanging straight. Like I don't have any like bumps or ripples, okay? So I'm gonna make sure that I keep a good grip on this. I'm gonna look at the body. And I'm going to make sure that my two Okumi panels are together. No bumps. You know, usually I kind of shake it out a little bit just to make sure that both layers of the fabric lay together. And then I'm going to grab the side seams. And that way I make sure that all of this is looking good. And again, my check to make sure that I did it right, it's gonna look like that. So it's gonna look like an M, okay? I'm gonna hold this M up to the camera. So there's that M. Okay, so once I know that that M is there, then I'm gonna take these two sleeves, I'm gonna fold them back, so now this is straight at the top and we're straight down. Okay. Again, making sure this is right. You should see a little bit of collar peeking out here. So here we are, we have this hoodie sode that we're hanging, we're stand folding because we don't have a table. What to do with the sleeves? Well, if I try to bring this up, I'm gonna end up with the sleeves kind of pooling like this. And that's not, that's not ideal. So what I like to do is take the two sleeves and bring them up to the part of the fabric that I'm already holding. So I'm here, okay? Then now that I've got everything, I've got these sleeves that are now manageable, making sure that they're hanging straight, the body is all managed. Now I can just sweep up the body 
take the hem like that and then fold it one more time and there we are standing stand folding of hoodies all day so yeah it just um you know doing the sleeves up to the top here it i just find that it makes it more manageable but you know your mileage may vary i mean seriously it's you know do what you need to do to like get it to fold nicely the main thing is is that you don't want to put kimono on hangers unless they are straight out hangers because this collar attachment to the body this is stitched by hand this is the probably the most delicate part of the kimono it's really easy for the collar to separate from the body if you hang this plus also you figure a lot of times you're dealing with silk or, or wool you've got like natural fibers and if you put hangers, like if you hang this on hangers, you're going to end up with shoulder divots like hereabouts and nobody likes shoulder divots. <laughs> so plus it'll stress the fabric and like this can literally come unstitched like this. This will come unstitched and this is the biggest pain in the butt part to restitch too. So trust me when I say you don't want to do that. So moral of the story is fold your kimono. <laughs> Uh, we have a folding tutorial that we filmed, but it hasn't been edited yet. And um, that's really funny. <laughs> Sherry, yes, and a lot of them are heavy. Um, so Sherry has to finish editing that once we're like done with this flash sale. And I think you guys are gonna really like it. Um, but yeah, that's our, our folding tutorial. We need to put that out there. So at any rate, that's how you fold this footy sode. So, um, any questions from anybody? I'm going to give this like another minute or so just to make sure that we don't have any questions. Um, and then I will let you guys go. So, um, yeah. Any questions? Any questions? Sherry's telling me she needs Hakama measurements. Oh, yes. Hakama measurements. You know what? Hold up one second. I'm going to show you one thing. Hakama measurements. So we've got a stockpile of um, proper hanger. Um, we can get hangers. We don't have them in yet. So um, message us or like keep an eye on the next couple of flash sales because um, I don't think our kimono hangers came in in time for this sale. Um, yeah, that was a heavy load. Okay. So I have a stash of vintage Hakama that are gonna be going up real soon. And just so you guys know how this works, for the measurement of the Hakama, the way that Hakama are typically measured is under the string, okay? I'm gonna lower this just a little bit. Yeah, I do remember you, April. Oh, that was definitely a heavy load. So what this string is, is this waistband here. So when it's measured, it is measured underneath here. Okay. So just so you guys know, um, the tag is going to say what the measurement is underneath the string. Um, and what these, this style is meant to sit at the waist. So you're going to want to measure from um, basically like your belly button roughly on down to your ankles. Um, so that's the style of Hakama. We do want to do a special order of graduation style Hakama, which are the Ampere waist style. They're the ones that sit higher on the body. Um, we did one of those about a year ago. And so I want to do another one, but we did get these in in time for this flash sale. And um, these are really nice. Some of them are silk, some of them are rayon. And so these are the, the waist height style. So anyway, um, yeah, I think that should about cover it. I'm just gonna check real quick. Yeah. Um, yeah, as far as our con schedule goes, like we're, um, 
we're not entirely sure how anything is going to go just because we do have some folks in the family with health issues so we we may not be seeing some of you guys until 2022 um we just don't know yet so you know keep an eye on our social media and everything and uh yeah <laughs> yeah i know i need to wrap soon okay so thank you guys very much for uh coming to this flash sale and coming to this live stream Please do join the Tangerine Mountain Secret Stash if you have not done so already. Um, visit us at www.tangerinemountain.com. Um, I will take a picture of the handy dandy chart and my amazing artwork so that you guys can reference it. And uh, yeah, so I will see you guys later. Take care. Thank you. Bye.